Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's movie vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we're talking about Black Panther and does Black Panther have a chance to win Best Picture at the Oscars? The short answer to that question is no, there's no chance in hell. But let me at least give you a little bit of my mindset behind it. And no, don't worry, it's not going to fall into a I think the movie's overrated, even though obviously I do. It's not going to be because the film's not good enough, which obviously I also agree is, is just the case. But I'm actually just going to go into some actual statistics. I'm going to go into some history. And also, I'm going to be using some numbers and percentages to try and help to explain why, just by the numbers, just based on that alone, this movie has essentially 0% chance of winning at the Oscars. So first off, if you didn't know this already, Black Panther won Best Ensemble at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. I know many of you that watch this channel do not care about the Screen Actors Guild, do not care about the Oscars, etc. which is why, once again, shameless plug, go ahead and vote for the first annual Wednesday Raven Awards, which I'm hosting on this channel as a boycott to the Oscars, because this is where you guys get to choose the movies. You guys chose the categories originally, and also you guys will eventually choose the winners. So right now we are in the nomination process, so go ahead and find the link in the description for this video. Let your voice be heard. Vote in whatever categories you want to. You do not have to vote in every single one. Submit, and you're done. And then eventually, over the next week, is probably when I'm going to close it off. I'm going to take the most films, the films with the most votes, the people with the most votes in certain categories, put them all together into a nice little ballot for you to fill out, and then the voting will begin. And all of the winners will be announced on the night of the Oscars. But it'll be on this channel, and it'll be a downright boycott of the Oscars, and also a damn good time. That all being said... Black Panther won at SAG, and some people are saying, oh my goodness, does this mean that it's going to win an Oscar? Well, not exactly. So we need to first understand a couple of things. First, what percentage chance do win do films that win at SAG for Best Ensemble have to go on to win Best Picture? Uh, not very good. In fact, the percentage is under 50%. Yes, that's correct. Since SAG has been around, since they've been giving out winners and, and awards for the Screen Actors Guild for Best Ensemble, it has only ever matched up with the Oscars for Best Picture. Only less than maybe 48% of the time last time I checked was the number, but it's close to 50. So it's a 50-50 shot. Now, some of you might say, oh, so you're saying that there is a chance, that there is a 50-50 chance of this happening at the movies well if only that was the only statistic that existed then yes i would say that but there are so many more things but before moving on from sag we need to remember this too a movie that was considered to be the front runner in green book which won an award called the producers guild award was not eligible or at least it did not get nominated at the very least for sag and so therefore was not in the running in the first place now that's important because that film in by all you know, intents and purposes, is the front runner, and the reason why is because if you win the Producers Guild Award, meaning the producers of the film won, and therefore it was seen as the best produced film among all of Hollywood's producers, what that means is that <laughs> that film has a higher chance. And the reason why is because if you win at the Producers Guild, you have a eighty percent. 75 no i think it's now 80 percent chance to go on to win best picture at the oscars which means green book statistically speaking has a much higher chance of winning than black panther so when you take that into account and also the fact that green book was not even put into this category up against black panther it tells you that okay the statistics might be 50 50 but there are certain movies that were not nominated here because remember too sag had five nominees the oscars had eight so there are films that were not nominated at SAG that are going to be in the running when the Oscars come around, when people are filling out their Oscars ballots. So that also is going to therefore dispense some votes, which is why SAG, and it's because of that very reason, that SAG is not usually a pretty good indication of what is eventually going to win at the Oscars. Still, people are making a huge deal out of it, saying, oh my gosh, the history, the history, the history. Oh my god, the movie amassed 1.35 billion in global sales and did so many amazing things because, oh my god, diversity, etc. Because obviously that's the reason why. I mean, they wouldn't be talking about this movie and this movie wouldn't be in the discussion right now if this was, you know, the Infinity War, which again, remember, remember that film? Remember that tiny little film that came out back in 2018 that made over $2 billion in the box office was the movie of the year? Again, I don't care what you have to say. The, the, when anyone looks back at 2018, they're going to say, oh yeah, that's right, Infinity War. Oh my god, Infinity War. Black Panther is just going to be a footnote on the history of 2018 when it comes to, you know, what movies people think about more so than anything else. But that that is, of course, just my own opinion. But also, I think it's based off of a lot of you know overall audience sentiment, and therefore a sense of fact as well. So therefore, 
What is the actual chance that Black Panther has to win at the Oscars? Well, it gets even worse when you understand some other major numbers. And so we're going to talk about another film now that many people suspect could also be a front runner at the Oscars, and that is the movie Roma. Roma is the film made by Alfonso Cuaron. It is the film based in Mexico. It's a Mexican director. Uh, he's already won at the Golden Globes. He's already gonna he's gonna win at the Directors Guild. Everyone's already you know crowned him as being the winner there. And if he does win, which is very likely, he's probably going to cop his speech from the Golden Globes where he talked about how we should not be building walls instead we should try to build bridges etc be more open and loving which again in and of itself in isolation is a fine message but of course we know Hollywood we know the media and so they're spinning this as this huge anti-Trump speech even though he never mentioned the man by name and also was I think overall because Alfonso Cuaron is usually not an overly political person for the most part I don't think that he was really trying to take those types of jabs maybe he was Again, obviously, I can't read into the man's heart, but that's the way that they're going to try and spin it, no matter what his overall intention is, which is one of the many reasons why Roma is considered to be one of the one of the most favorites. So let's assume, then, that he does win at the DGA Awards. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that whoever wins at the DGA has a very high chance of winning the Best Director at the Oscars, and if you win Best Director at the Oscars, there's a 75% chance that she will go ahead and win Best Picture. They match up, rather, 75% of the time, which is a very high percentage, which means that Roma very well is still at least in the discussion. So a lot of people have heard a lot of numbers at this point saying, oh my gosh, how, who did all this? Well, I found out most of these numbers from the guys over at GoldDerby.com. I used to really love Gold Derby, and I, I would recommend them. The problem is, is that when the whole Harvey Weinstein sc scandal came out, this was a site that dedicates not, not just time to award season, but also to Hollywood news. They didn't have a single story covering Harvey Weinstein. At no point did they cover it. They didn't condemn it. Nothing. Which means that these are a bunch of Hollywood insiders that are just, you know, kissing a bunch of ass because they want to still stay relevant and they still want to have their access. And so they didn't want to try and ruffle any feathers, which I think is interesting. So that's why I've been staying away from them. But unfortunately, when it, when it comes down to it, they are still the best people when it comes to actual statistics and other general information to that effect. So why then is Roma not guaranteed to win? And what is something that it has to overcome? As you see, it says, can Roma overcome editing snub to win best at, you know, picture at the Oscars? Now, now, of course, he says that it's a snub, and of course, I think that's just a matter of opinion, but the reason why he mentions editing is this. As he says, only 10 films, so since the editing category has been around, since 1934, only 10 films, only 10, have gone on to win an Oscar without having a nomination in editing. And that's actually a very overlooked statistic, which is interesting. It does make sense from a logical perspective because you need to have a well-edited film. You need to have a film that's well put together in order for it to be a good film overall. That's probably going to be enjoyed by many. But it is also interesting that since editing has been around, only 10 films during that time, which means that 90% of the time, a film that's nominated for editing goes on to win Best Picture. That does not mean that it has to win editing. just needs to get the nomination. But it's interesting. Now, of course, we could obviously see the case that Roma could easily you know buck that trend we have seen it in the past when the fact that birdman did it three years ago when it did not win over at the editing nomination or rather didn't even get an editing nomination so therefore it is still possible there is recent memory where the statistic hasn't held up but still 90 percent the numbers and the stats aren't really supportive of roma winning the same goes for black panther because black panther also did not get nominated for best editing which means that it also has a very small chance of going on to win. Add on to the fact that winning at SAG does already gives you a low chance in the first place, and add on to that the fact that the director is not going to win Best Director, and add on to that the fact that it is a superhero film, and it's lucky enough just to have been nominated, because keep in mind the first superhero film in history to be nominated was Black Panther. It had never been done before, and of course we've heard that constantly saying, oh my gosh, it's history, it's history, it's history. Because that's all you can hear about it. And now, of course, they're going to be putting it out in theaters for the month of February for Black History Month. And they're going to let people go to see it for free. Which, again, I think is a great thing to let people go see a movie for free. But if you're trying to tell me that if for no other reason than for good PR, ah, you're going to try and be selling me something, obviously, there. But why, then, is Black Panther, in my opinion, not likely to win Best Picture? Well, it really comes down to a couple of things. One, the PGA Award. Because even though it is not always right... The percentage is high enough to where I think that it does seem to indicate where people go. 
The reason why you see such a correlation between the Producers Guild and the Oscars is because it's the same type of voting system. So remember how back, you know, back when the Dark Knight got snubbed. You want to talk about snubs? You know, GoldDerby.com. Oh, Roma got snubbed for editing. Sure. If we're talking about snubs, if we're talking about films that were robbed of a nomination, The Dark Knight, which is arguably one of the greatest films of the last, you know, of the 20th, of the 21st century, arguably, got no nomination for Best Picture, when it really, honestly, should have gotten one. And the backlash to that was so bad, it was so vocal, that the next year, the Oscars changed their rules to allow for 10 movies to be nominated. But guess what happened? They nominated not only movies no one had ever heard of or seen, but they also nominated films that, yeah, they were, you know, big, but they weren't good. And so then they were like, okay, well, we can't just have 10 because then we're going to get a bunch of films that really shouldn't be nominated. We're going to water these down. So, oh, you know what we'll do? We'll do this preferential ballot thing. And so the preferential ballot is also the same way that the Producers Guild votes. And how does that work? Well, what happens is you get a list. And you vote your favorite movie. So in this case for the Oscars, this is how they're going to vote for it. They're going to say, all right, this is my number one, my number two, number three, number four, number five, etc. So let's say that they take all the number one votes and they put them up against each other. That is not how it's decided, interestingly enough. So the one with the most number one votes doesn't win. Because it's not by popular vote anymore. It used to be, but now it's this preferential ballot. And the reason why they do it that way is because they want the film that is the most liked, not just number one votes, but overall the most liked to win. Which means that your second and third place choices actually play a much larger part. Because let's say you voted for a film that only ends up getting, let's say there's 100 votes total, let's say it only gets 15 of them. Well, at that point, then, that ballot is not cast aside, but instead that number one vote is cast aside and so that ballot then goes to the number two and if the number two film is still in the game boom now the ballot gets added to that film instead and they keep doing this over and over and over and over again until you finally have one film that has the majority so eventually it gets down to two and then you finally have one with the majority and if that is the case maybe not two but eventually you'll have one that has the the vast majority of support so that if they kept going it wouldn't make a difference regardless but eventually you get to that magic number and it's of one, it's of first, second, and third place votes. So it's a very convoluted system. I know that it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but still, that's the system that they use. And so that's also another reason why you see the Producers Guild match up with the Oscars so much is because since they've adopted that system, it's been matched up almost perfectly. I want to say there's only been maybe one or two exceptions since that change happened back in 2008. So it's a very consistent system. But another reason why I also put you know, kind of an exclamation point or, you know, rather a question mark next to Black Panther is because of the fact that I don't think that it's going to get a lot of first, second, and third place votes. I don't think it's going to get that kind of a love because in my mind, when you look at the ones that got nominated for Best Picture, because you got, remember, Black Panther, Roma, Star is Born, Black Landsman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, and Vice. Vice is definitely not going to be up there. The ones that are going to be up there, the ones that are going to get the most votes are obviously Green Book, seeing that it won the Producers Guild Award, meaning it's got a lot of support. Again, it's a very good indicator. So Green Book's definitely in the game no matter how way you spin it. Another film you'd have to put up there would be Black Klansman. Spike Lee's first nomination. It's a huge deal for them. Black Klansman, of course, is a very politically motivated film. It fits their narrative. And guess what? The Oscars love to tell a narrative. They love to fit the narrative. And so therefore, you have to put that in the game. And then also, you would have to put the favorite up there also. So you have Roma, you've got The Favorite, you've got Black Klansman, you've got Green Book, and all of these films are kind of vying for that position. Those are going to be the ones that top the one, two, and three spots. You know, the one through four is going to mostly consist of those four films. Black Panther is going to be probably the five, six, seven, or eight slot, which again might be a good showing, but it's not going to be enough to be able to put it up in the leagues with the others. And why is that the case? Well, who makes up the majority of the Oscar voters? Oh, wait, that's right. Old people. <laughs> like, like, let's just be honest. Older people, usually it's older white people. Because remember how you always hear about the Oscars are so white and it's the demographic issue, etc. And, you know, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, racism, etc. You always hear the same thing every single year. Even this year. Even this year when you had such a diverse group of films, etc. What was the number one complaint? Oh my god, but there were no female directors. Oh my god. This is, this is just this is terrible. And you hear the same thing every single year. They're never happy. And no one's ever going to be happy at this point. But the whole point of that is is to show you that there is indeed a very strong feeling and a very, uh, I think, a very valid opinion that many Oscar voters are set in their ways. 
Now, that does not mean that surprises cannot happen. Keep this in mind. I don't think anyone in their mom thought Moonlight was going to win a couple years ago, but yet it did. Again, really didn't have any indication that that was going to win, but it still did nonetheless. So there very well could be a chance that a Black Panther has a chance to win, but as I've hopefully shown, the numbers really aren't on the side. You know, Green Book has the obvious advantage with the PGA Awards. You look to the films that got nominated for editing. Those obviously have a huge advantage. The ones that got nominated for editing was would would have been in the situation would have been. Oh, what was it? Let me see right here. So it says of this year's eight years uh, eight picture nominations, Black Panther, Roma, and A Star Is Born did not make the cut for best film editing, which means that technically speaking, ninety percent again, ninety percent of the time, one of these movies has a chance to win. And that's another reason why I put Black Klansman in the favorite up in that top tier is because Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, and Vice all got nominated for editing, which means that there's a huge chance, a 9 in 10 chance, that one of those five goes on to win the Oscar. Bohemian Rhapsody is a great film, and if it wins, I would be happy because Bohemian Rhapsody was so much fun. And what I loved about it, too, was that it did not play the identity politics game like it very well could have. But that was another reason why I think critics didn't like it as much is because they thought it was going to be a lot more woke than it ended up being. It ended up being just a really good film, a fun film. That's what people want to see. So I, I loved Bohemian Rhapsody. I thought it was great. The favorite was was woke as hell, and, and it was so bad. Like I mean, it was well shot. It was beautifully shot. The acting was fine for the most part except for, for Emma Stone, but everything else was just, I mean, oh my god. Never going to see that again in my entire life. Green Book was great, too. I love Green Book. Green Book was my third favorite film of the year, right behind Infinity War and Bad Times at the El Royale, which got completely shut out, by the way. And then, of course, you have Vice, which is yet another attack on, you know, George W. Bush, because you can't have enough attacks on George W. Bush or Dick Cheney. And so when you look at all these movies together, and when you look at just how woke these levels are, you know, obviously some people can say, well, well Black Panther could probably fit in that category. But once again, you have to look to the demographics. You have to look to the statistics. And you have to look to the fact that if this is the first time that a comic book film has ever been nominated, it's not likely going to be the first time that a comic book movie wins the Oscar. That chance of happening is very low. Now, is there still a chance? Yes. But in this very, very humble movie critic's opinion, and in the words of the famous Vincent Mann, I don't think there's any chance in hell. No chance in hell. Black Panther wins. And this entire video is dedicated to Laura, who has a bet going on with me. So... Cannot wait to get my reward on that one. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. Also, let me know your own thoughts about this. What do you think is going to win Best Picture? Honestly, I know a lot of you are going to be like, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Well, if you don't care, well, then join us here for the Wednesday Waving Awards. We're going to have a, like, a good time. Probably going to dress up a little bit. Again, maybe do some giveaways, stuff like that. Make it a little bit fun. You know, it could be great. February 24th, guys, right here on this channel. And again, link in the description of this video. Go vote. Make your voice heard. And... We'll have some fun. It's kind of like the Razzies and Oscars mixed, mixed into all one because we've got positive awards talking about the best in film. We also have some negative awards talking about the worst in film too. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, share this video, please. And uh, let me know how you think about all of this and if you care about the Oscars and what you think is going to win and if you care. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.